Hi, and welcome to this video in a series of videos uh, where I try to give a short explanation to and try to answer the question, what causes lymphedema? That is a question I get a lot in the clinic, and I also see that it's asked a lot online. So there will be other videos on these different topics. There will be, there are many different things that can cause lymphedema. One is obesity, one is surgery, one is venous insufficiency, insulin resistance, cancer treatment, and it can be hereditary. There are other options as, or other uh, reasons as well, um, but those are the ones that I'm going to try to address in some short video. So one of the common causes for lymphedema is surgery. So I'm going to try to explain how that can be. So first, let's start with a short description of what is lymphedema. So, so lymphedema is when the swelling in the limb that happens when the lymph vessels are not able to drain fluid fast enough. That's a short way to describe it. So knowing that, let's use this picture and explain how uh, surgery can cause lymphedema. So, to, so a little bit of anatomy and physiology of the lymphatic system, real quick. The lymphatic system moves fluid throughout the body. The fluid comes from the blood, but it's waste products mostly. Um, it's a very important part of our immune system because it removes waste from tissue. It's one of the things it does. And so it does that together with fluid. So if we think of the arm, for example, uh, there's, there's, there are waste products with fluid in the tissue that needs to be transported and it gets transported by these green lines that we call those lymph vessels. And then you see the, the little green dots. Those are lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are like uh, transfer stations or filtration stations. So the waste comes in on one side and, and it goes out cleaner on the other side. Um, so the lymphatic system is very much involved in preventing cancer in our body. And that's also why when cancer spreads, sometimes it can actually go into the lymph system. So, so one common surgery, unfortunately, um, that, that often can cause lymphedema is after a mastectomy, after breast cancer, um, if the lymph nodes have to be removed up in this area, in this, uh, we call it axillary area under the armpit. Sometimes if the cancer has spread to those lymph nodes, they have to be removed. Sometimes they only remove uh, a couple of them. Those are called sentinel lymph nodes. And that's where they're trying to not have to remove all the lymph nodes. So they check those. And if there's no cancer there, they may leave the rest of the lymph nodes. Otherwise, they may try to take all of them that are there to, to keep that cancer from spreading. So when they do that, you create a scar and these lymph nodes in this area right here are removed. So now let's go back to think about how the system is moving fluid. It's moving fluid up through the arm. It comes around the bend here and it all drains into that area. That's like a hub for the lymphatic system for that side of the body. Also the, the, the chest area and the upper back area on that same side also drains into that same area. So if you have to take those lymph nodes out, there's now going to be an obstruction in the flow. So you could say that the plumbing is going to be clogged because the lymph nodes are missing. So that's one way uh, that surgery can cause lymphedema. Fortunately, not everyone gets lymphedema that have had that surgery. I think the statistics are about 30% or one out of three people that have their lymph nodes removed, will develop lymphedema at some point. That means two out of three don't. And it's almost more difficult to understand why the two out of three don't get lymphedema uh, because their lymphatic system is also damaged. I'm gonna try to explain a little bit about that later. Um, but many, there are many other surgeries that can cause lymphedema because anytime that you cut through the skin, you are obstructing the lymphatic system. You are damaging the lymphatic system because the lymphatic system that we're looking at here, these vessels are right below the surface of the skin, three millimeters. So you don't have to cut very deep before you're cutting through lymphatics. And that means when it scars back up, that lymphatic isn't going to flow across that scar very well. So, so it may be, there may be a somewhat permanent obstruction in that area. 
uh, I'll tell you about one other case uh, uh, or, or a case that we had. It was a, a lady that had severe lymphedema, a lot of swelling in her arm, uh, and she had not had br a breast cancer. Um, she had not had any lymph nodes removed. They were all still there. So, and she had no history to really explain what, what would have caused that, except she had had a pacemaker put in. At first, we thought that's such a minor surgery. Can't imagine that that would cause lymphedema. But when we looked at the scar, she had, she was really tiny. She was over 90 years old. She had a really narrow trunk. So that little scar uh, that that was done to put the pacemaker in there was pretty big on her in proportion. And it actually, and the, when we looked at the location of the scar, it was about right there. So if you look at these vessels here, they kind of bottleneck right there and they curve around and they come in. So that, that cut was made perfectly perpendicular to all those vessels. So it is very likely that that was the cause of that lymphedema. We also get a lot of uh, lower extremity or leg lymphedema. And so that could be, there's another cluster of very important lymph nodes right here. They're not depicted here on the picture very well, but that's a really important area as well. And sometimes because of skin cancer, melanoma, they have to be removed. Um, but many other, there can also be deeper abdominal surgeries uh, that will obstruct uh, lymph flow in the abdominal areas. And that's probably one type of lymphedema that's often overlooked. If there's been um, female surgeries, uh, any abdominal surgeries, it could, it could disrupt the abdominal. And pretty much everything from the left side and both legs all drains through this lymphatic duct. So if there's an obstruction here, you're really hitting sort of at the main hub of the drainage. So that can cause swelling in both legs. We've also had many patients that have had knee replacements and different knee surgeries. And there are a lot of lymph nodes and lymph vessels coming through the knee area. It's a movable part. So it's hard to know um, when they're cutting and when they're, if they are doing any damage to the lymphatics. But we've had many patients with uh, swelling below the knee and they've had multiple knee surgeries. And that swelling then has become chronic. Another question that we get sometimes is, can lymphedema begin years after surgery? And yes, absolutely it can. <clears throat> We've had many uh, patients that have come in and when we, they, they started getting swelling within the last year. And when we get the history, they had the surgery 10 years ago. And, and they might have been told or they might think to themselves, well, it can't have nothing to do with that surgery because that was 10 years ago. But if the lymph nodes are removed, the lymph nodes are still not there. If there are scars, the scar tissues can still be there. So, but why does it take so long sometimes for it to happen? Well, to understand that, I'm gonna get a little bit um, technical on you. So think about the lymphatic system moving fluid. So there's a load, it has how much, the load means how much fluid does it have that it needs to move? And then it has a transport capacity. That is how many liters per hour can it move? So, in normal, in a normal functioning system, we only used just a small part of the capacity. So our lymph system can move this much fluid, but it usually only has to move this much. And if for some reason that load goes up with more fluid to move, there's extra capacity and we're not gonna get swelling. Well, if we have a damaged lymphatic system, the transport capacity of the lymphatic system has gone down. In other words, it cannot move as much fluid per hour as it could before the surgery. But if the load is here and the capacity went down to here, we still don't see any swelling. But now we're working at near 100% of our capacity and that really wears on the system. It wears on the system slowly and gradually. So you could say that it like uh, speeds up the aging of the system because it's having to work too hard. It doesn't have a chance to recover. And it might take 10 years for that, for the load to go above the capacity. And when the load goes above the capacity, the difference between the two, that's the swelling. So that's why it can happen later. So I don't want to end on that note because we talked about a downward spiral. Um, I want to talk about how we can try to turn this downward spiral first of all, stop it from spiraling downwards and then start spiraling upwards. Uh, in short, first you have to treat, that's phase one. 
whatever swelling is there, we've got to get rid of it because having swelling there will further damage the system. So the best treatment method to reduce the swelling in chronic lymphedema is called complete decongestive therapy. It includes manual lymph drainage, that's a massage, compression, exercise, and skin care. A good uh, lymphedema therapy program should include all those and it should not skip the compression because the compression is hugely important. The massage feels really good and everybody likes it, but we gotta have the compression with it too in form of bandages or compression garments and, and you may also use a compression pump. Phase one, we reduce the swelling. Phase two, this is a chronic condition in most cases, which means now we have to learn how to manage it and we do that best with compression garments, but we can also use to, or learn to use do some of those techniques from phase one, like lymph drainage massage to ourselves. We may have a compression pump at home uh, and take care of our own skin. So phase one should lead into phase two. Phase one, you need a good therapist. And phase two, you become your own uh, therapist and you take care of it yourself. Then uh, we have something that we called phase three. There's such uh, exciting research coming out on the ketogenic diet and lymphedema. For all these years, I've had to tell my patients that there are only these two phases, treat and maintain. And the scar that's been made is, is there. It's not going to improve. But there are some animal studies now coming out where, they've, where they fed ketones to mice after creating a lymphatic scar. And they have seen new lymph vessels form across the scar. The same similar research is being done on humans that have had surgery before. Uh, that have lymphedema and they're going on a ketogenic diet and they're actually seeing improvement in the lymphatic transport capacity. So we always said once that capacity is down, it's down, it's not going to get any better. We just got to help it. But there is some hope uh, and some good possibilities uh, that the ketogenic, eating ketogenic can help to improve the actual capacity of the lymphatic system. And there are more videos on that topic around. Hope to see you on our website. Um, check out the courses and classes that we have. We have our clinic in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, and uh, contact us if you have any questions.